Hi, I'm Yudera Escobar and I'm running for Congress for District 25. There's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet concerning me, my family, my political ideas. And it's very troubling because too often I find that partisan uh, bickering, uh, the, the, the propaganda machinery, uh, the desire for clicks, the, we know that fake news sells and that it's sometimes fun to join uh, pitchfork mobs and eventually in that context of hate and division, uh, people's reputations, character assassination happens and our reputations are forever tarnished by the easiest of editorials. Five minutes online can ruin a person's life forever. One of the reasons why I'm running for Congress is that ever since I was a little girl, I was raised here in South Florida. Miami's been my home, my home city from uh, 1994. So I know very well what goes on in both aisles of the political discussion. I've heard what Democrats have to say. I've heard what Republicans have to say what the fringe of both parties have to say and what normal centrist folks like me have to say about the whole picture. Ever since I was little, I've heard horrific things on the radio, on TV, uh, calls for open uh, warfare to happen on our, uh, our neighbor's island, yes. 90 miles from South Florida lies an island that has a very tumultuous history a past that involves all of us, immigrants, political refugees, I was granted political asylum along with my family because I am the daughter of a political prisoner. We are all involved in a very complicated history. So having suffered in Cuba, it's the reason why I'm here. I'm running for Congress for 2020 precisely because I live in the United States. And why am I here? Because we had to flee. We are political refugees. We had no life, no, there was no option for us because back in the day, if you didn't work for the state, you had no other option. We didn't accept the social contract. That's why my parents picked their two kids and we left and we never turned back because back then when you arrived to the United States, you settled down, you set roots and you were here for good. You started a new life, you learned the language and you accepted the fact that you would be buried here because this was your new home. And there is nothing worse. There is no greater injustice. And I say this aloud so that everyone can hear because it has happened to me. There is no greater injustice on earth concerning political debates, discussions, than to have your real identity denied a right to exist. For years, I have been labeled something that I am not. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is just your classic definition of what authoritarianism is. What do you think a re an authoritarian regime does? You know, it's not just uh, the, the Nazis parading in, in some boulevard. There are many ways to, de to demonstrate, to express authoritarianism, injustice. And what is fundamentally wrong from this whole debate around my person, my, my ideas, is that I am essentially being denied my true identity. And it is absurd, it is unfair, and I invoke the higher powers for some justice here because I did not suffer in Cuba. I did not come here and cry so many darn times to have people who benefited personally from the regime tell me in my face that I am not who I am. You don't get to do that. You don't get to speak for me. I am who I am and I defend my ideals, which are the ones that have gotten hippies, uh, philanthropists, uh, uh, activists. Uh. Gandhi got into trouble because of this, because we advocate for peace, for reconciliation, for diplomatic relations, for dialogue. I wanna see the beauty in everyone because I know that it's there. Even on those that hate me, even on, in those that, that in these days, they, they, they go around social media distributing uh, fraudulent uh, holiday cards, greetings and little glitter and flowers, but then they send me death threats in private. That is being a hypocritical lowlife. You cannot 
be a, a good person, be a responsible citizen in the United States if you deny somebody their real identity and try to speak for them. No, I am not a communist. How can I get make that clearer? I was homeschooled. I don't have limitations. I have no barriers. If I was a communist, I would say it because I've gotten into trouble denying that I am. I've gotten into trouble for the simplest of things. Advocating for what President Obama later did got me into trouble as well. I've been getting death threats for, for almost like a decade now. I've had to call the Miami bomb squad because some weirdo put something weird underneath our family car. That's the reality that we live in. And, and it is absurd, it is ridiculous, and again, extremely unfair to have people who belonged in the, in, the, in, the, in the Communist Party, they were active militants in the Communist Party in Cuba. They belonged to the army. They were military men. But then when they come over here, they instantly want to wash the, the, uh, themselves out. They want to just get rid of that. And then they adopt this, this message, this, this hateful rhetoric that continues to divide Cuban families. And I say enough is enough. We cannot allow this political partisanship, this, this, this division, this war of ideas, of peace versus war, because let's get one thing straight. The Cuban uh, regime change uh, atmosphere, that whole plan, the idea of, of, it, of trying to uh, overthrow the Cuban government, that whole platform, it funds families, entire fortunes are made off the backs of Cubans. The Cuban suffering is being turned into a business and it has for almost ha for around 60 years. It is a business. We aren't talking politics here. This isn't about uh, supporting Medicare for all or trying to get uh, to, to uh, keep the VA uh, uh, public. No, this is about certain minority groups we could call them a mafia if they hate, behave as such. We're talking about people, individuals, who are continuously trying to protect that Cold War uh, battle so that nothing changes. And I want to confront the status quo. I've been doing it for, um, for almost a decade now. The status quo needs to end because we want change, because we want people to speak their mind. I am upset how so many people that I've talked to in District 25 and South Florida in general refuse to speak their mind. They're afraid. They are intimidated because here in South Florida, you're only allowed a specific viewpoint. You're only allowed a, a certain political opinion. Everything else gets ripped aside. You're, we're delegated, we're pushed off to, the, to become uh, collateral damage. If you have your own sovereign, independent idea in South Florida, the, the, the media will confront you and they will put words in your mouth and they will get things out of context so that they, in alliance with the political class, with the political establishment, continue to reap the benefits of the Cuban people's suffering. And the same goes for all other communities, such as the Venezuelan topic. They don't talk about the things that are wrong here. They, 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 they tiptoe around it. They beat about the bush. But they continue to push this Cold War hostility, not because they care about the democracy in Cuba. We care about that. We know that the best way that you can get a, the, the middle class in Cuba strengthened enough so that they have economic independence to, to be able to Really seriously fight for the advance of their democratic rights, we know that we then need to support that emerging middle class. But, but they don't want that. The, the, the status quo uh, beneficiaries want to keep milking that. They want to juice that and, and get, that, get their money's worth for, for all the mouthful jargon and propaganda, war propaganda, that has been producing economic results for these families for decades. And I have had to confront for so many years this nonstop hostility because I dare to advocate for peace, because I dare to say, let's let bygones be bygones. Let's just turn the page as painful as it was for us because I suffered in Cuba. As painful as it was for our families, we recognize that we need to be superior. We need to be 
to, to confront our pain and, and, and be above those tears for the general good so that people here in South Florida and on the island can progress, can live wholesome, happy lives and decide their own future without any medal, medal, meddling. And for this, for advocating for reconciliation, for having the, 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 the moral high ground of being able to, to recognize the beauty of people everywhere, I want them to enjoy the, the privileges that I have been able to enjoy here in Miami. And we did not come here to the United States to be intimidated, to be threatened, to have our voice silenced by the oppressive power. We, from the vulnerable underground, are challenging the status quo. I am above my pain because I confronted it. No more when my parents speak to their friends or newcomers about our past, about how I had a police officer jump, storm our home and tear off my, my only pair of shoes from my feet. I am above those things. I no longer hide in some room like I did so many times in my childhood whenever I heard the stories and covered my ears because I didn't want to hear it because I got goosebumps whenever I re relived it. It was a traumatic experience and ever since I opened my eyes in this world, I have com been confronting uh, political oppression because my family suffered. Why? Because my dad was a political prisoner and he wanted what was best for the Cubans. And those who, who benefited, who collected salaries in Cuba, who were part of the military, who were part of the Communist Party, do not get to speak for me. You do not get to label me something that I am not, because I am not a communist, I'm a humanist. We have had enough of tribalism. It ended up in, in wars always. We need to recognize that the other side is composed of people. And those who mock my pain, those who deny me my real identity, put, putting words in my mouth, distorting the facts, omitting entire years of my life. Because for years, as the spokesperson and, and vice president of, 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 of a nonprofit here in South Florida, we advocated for the release of the political prisoners. We advocated for the elimination of the white card, which kept us locked in Cuba for four years. We advocated for beautiful things, things that add to a peaceful future, a collective future where everybody has a, has a chance to speak their mind and not fear retaliation. But of course, entire chapters of my life are, are censored, are, are omitted, so that they can run this, this fraudulent narrative that I don't recognize as me because that is not who I am. That's not Yadira Escobar. What are you talking about? Why aren't you mentioning the fact that my mother's disabled? Because when she was pregnant with my little brother, she, she, was, she was pushed aside. She was the victim of police brutality. And she told me when, I, when we were suffering that police raid in our humble home in Cuba, she told me, do not forget what you are living. Do not forget what you are seeing. This is what happens in Cuba. And, and I was screaming because I didn't want a stranger touching me. I didn't want no police officer in full uniform, a very tall man, to be grabbing my legs and ripping apart the shoes that that morning my father had bought for me. And I was super grateful because I was barefooted because the revolution impoverished my family. We lost properties, we lost businesses, we lost homes, we lost wealth, lands even, eventually. That's what the revolution did to me. But that day, that day that we were the victims of police brutality in Cuba still exists in my mind and I can't recount it. I tried not to get emotionally involved, but I cannot re just stay numb to what I experienced in Cuba because it was brutal. It caused, since my mom was pregnant and she was violently pushed by the police officer, she eventually had a stroke. And, and, and my dad and I, um, we sat at a park while she was in the hospital where there was a beautiful sunset and he told me let's pray to God let's let's seriously pray to the heavens to our creator the one 
<laughs> true god let's pray to him so that your mother survives and she did and i'm so happy for it because she was she wasn't just another nameless person that the local miami press the establishment press won't ever mention because they they hitch on one or two people so that they represent an entire dissidence an entire opposition so that everybody else is silenced you won't see uh, a real documentation of the real political prisoners and the real fighters that are actively part members of their community, loved by their community in Cuba, but denied a political voice. You won't see that because we are living in a fun, in, essentially in a dictatorship of the mind and we are denied continuously our real identities. People are afraid to speak in Miami. They write to me in private saying, thank you so much for daring to confront the, the establishment down here because people like us are always denied a right to speak because we are genuine, because we are real and we weren't created. We're not puppets of some mafia trying to continuously reap the benefits and make millions of dollars off of the suffering of our neighbors. The what I have suffered, I take it as what life is, as long as we do not stand up for ourselves. The weak will always be preyed upon by the powerful if we do not unite against the injustice. And I will not be silenced, I will not be pushed aside. This isn't a goodbye, I, this, you're only making me stronger because I recognize in those who abuse right here in, in Miami, those who try to silence us, those are the same tactics that I recognize were used in Cuba. And we are above this and it doesn't matter that, that we don't have uh, the, the powerful tools because we are the many and we have the decency, we have the moral high ground and we will get through with this because it is what's fair. And like I said, there are more of us. So whatever suffering, they cause at us, the, the, these cyber bullies, these real life uh, thugs. It doesn't matter how much they bark today because tomorrow we will confront them and they will be judged for their injustices. And the world will see just how primitive the, ba the battleground here is in, in, in South Florida. Uh, I didn't want to make it too long. We are kind of rushing here. I have to go inside and <laughs> get ready for Sabbath. But there you go. I share with you no cue cards, no script, no nothing because I am a normal person. I'm genuine. I'm real. Here I am. I am exposing myself to you. And um, it is what it is. But we can beat them because they're evil and don't want us to have a, a beautiful earth in our hands. We can do this. We keep strong. Yeah.